Methodist, we are so glad to see you guys this morning, whether you're here in the auditorium or you're worshiping with us at home, we are so excited that you're joining us for this hour. And now I'm going to invite all of you to stand as you are able, as the band leads us in truly today.
band. Thank you, Nick, and your beard. <laughs> Just so happy to see it. I can't say that enough. Good morning, church. Welcome to New Albany Methodist. My name is Jen Kleima, and I'll be your worship leader this morning. And again, I'll say whether you're here with us at church or whether you're worshiping with us at home, we're so excited just to be with you and just to be together as a, a church community. And before we sit down, I'm going to have you guys turn to your pot, like turn to your neighbors and the other pods and just give a hello. I have, give a hello. I'm going to wave at the camera. Yeah. Good morning. All right, you guys can have a seat. You guys can have a seat. So I, I was just given some really valuable information, and that is our friend Bob Dye is 65 today, 65. 65 today. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bob. You know, my, my dad actually just had his 68th birthday. We have another member of this church that just celebrated their 40th birthday. Uh, Brian Kleiman and I had our 13th anniversary in May. Right? Just, you know, so God made all the cool things happen in May. I'm just saying. <laughs> all the cool things and all the cool people happened in May. No. No, but lots of blessings this month. So, Bob, I hope you have an awesome day. Awesome day. Thank you. You're welcome. So, 
Today, today is, a, is a really great day because, as you know, we've been talking about the Beatitudes individually week by week, right? So today we, we kind of, like, bring all that together. We, we bring all that together, okay? So I'm going to read really quick, and it's, I'm just going to read the entire reading with all of the Beatitudes. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we've done each of these individually over the past several weeks. And today, Frank's going to kind of tie it all together and, and bring it home for us with his message entitled Totally Blessed. And so what I wanted to do just briefly is go back to what being blessed is, right? We hear it all the time. We say it. We hear other folks say it. They're blessed. You're very blessed. I'm very blessed. I have... I have a wonderful family. I'm so blessed. Right? You, your kid got into college. What a blessing. Right? A lot of times we're tie, tying being blessed to a positive outcome. So what about, the, what about the person without a home? What about the person that struggles with a chronic disease or has a child that struggles with a chronic disease? Are they not blessed? Of course they are. Of course they are. But I think often when we use the word blessed, it, it sometimes gets a little diluted, right? Because we use it so much and sometimes it's, it's, you know, we think of it as being tied always to a positive outcome and that's simply not the case. That's simply not the case. Being blessed is being recognized and touched by something holy, by God. And in this, these Beatitudes, we, we learn that, right? Because all of these characteristics of someone that make them blessed are not the things we normally think about, right? When we use the word blessed. Right? Right, Brian? Yeah. Yeah, right, Emmett? Yeah. <laughs> right. So what I'm going to do is, is challenge you all. You know, last week we had the challenge of when we get dressed in the morning, we're going to think about not only putting on our outfit or whatever for the day, but also putting the armor around our heart. God puts the armor around our heart. So this week, I want you to think about what being blessed really means. And this is kind of how I think about it. Is, have I ever felt blessed when I bought a car? I was happy. I was pretty excited. These new cars are kind of fun, right? They smell good. They're shiny, right? They make you happy for a little bit. But I don't think I felt blessed. I think the times that I have felt blessed are when I have been sad and someone has said exactly the right thing, right? Or I have come to church with something weighing heavy on my heart and the message that week was exactly what I needed to hear. It's those times that I have recognized my need for God, that I am the most blessed. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So will you all bow your heads and pray with me as we prepare? Oh, dear God, we are blessed. We are, we are blessed, not because of the things that we have or necessarily, you know, the good fortune in our lives. Those are blessings. Those are blessings from you. But the supreme blessing is our recognition of you and our recognition of our need for you in our lives. And thank you for walking with us through this journey of life and being with us every step of the way. And in your name we pray, amen.
then you would be my compass. What do you see that's worth looking out with? We are free. Tiny offering. That was a beautiful offering. Thank you, band. Hmm. Hello, I'm Pastor Frank. Happy birthday, Bob. You're such a baby. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, you, uh, 
you get a few years on you, you'll turn into something, I bet. <laughs> yeah. I'm Pastor Frank. Welcome, online congregation. Welcome. I, I was thinking that this group, all of us here under this roof today, physically in this room, are about twice as many as Jesus gathered when he had his intimate group of friends. So welcome, Christ followers. Jesus calls you. Jesus needs you. Jesus loves you. This I know. I'm going to bless the hour speaking of tithing offering compared to Calvary. I'm going to, I'm going to bless our offering because I want to have our pastoral prayer afterwards because this is Memorial Sunday. So thank you for continuing to make your faithful offerings online, dropping a, a check in the mail to the church. Thank you, those of you who make your in-person offerings. Our offering basket is at the right adjacent to the exit door. So, um, you know, we, we make our tiny offerings, and all offerings are tiny compared to Calvary compared to what God offered, sending us his son. And all that he taught and all that he did and all that he sacrificed. And so God lets us participate as kingdom builders. So will you allow me to bless this offering we are to receive? Oh, dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to make our tiny offering compared to Calvary. We thank you for, for calling us to be helpers and healers, help, uh, helpers and healers and proclaimers of the good news, heralds of the kingdom. We ask that you take these gifts and multiply them, use them for the building of the kingdom in this place, and throughout the world, and then set us to the doing of your will, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I, I would mention that we're going to have our time of remembrance, and I'll invite you to stand uh, in a moment, if you are able, as we honor these dear ones. I want to mention Susan Bosworth, um, Ruth and Bill Johnson's mom passed to our Lord's Trust and Care this week and we will be having her surge service uh, next Sunday. And so she is on the, our list of remembrances. Will you rise as we remember our folks who have gone on to our Lord's Trust and Care in the last 12 months. We remember these, our beloved. Patty Miller, Becky Casey, Wayne Dismuke, Louis Wetzler, Mary Rasick, Bill Lees, Bill Davidson, Cindy Elzer, Eleanor Taylor, Dick Scherer, Donna Castle, Diane Kibler, and Susan Bosworth. Will you pray with me? Oh, dear God, we lift these names to you. We know that you have welcomed them into heavenly portals. We miss them, and yet we celebrate them because their memory is holy to us. They have walked sacred pathways with us. They have shared the work of the kingdom with us. They have drawn from us, drawn out of us, our best selves. Even as you have called us, they have echoed your voice. 
as they encouraged us to follow your ways. And so, Lord, we, we pray for these families who are missing someone today, whether on this list or uh, someone that simply is nested in our hearts. And we thank you for the great examples and the encouragement we have found. And we pray all this in Christ's name. We've been studying the Beatitudes. Beatitude means supreme blessing. Supreme, supreme blessing from God. And so we have these Beatitudes that are found in the fifth chapter of Matthew. And we've been staying with them a few weeks and Today, we get to tie a bow around this message series before, before we move on next week to a message series on Jesus' family tree. Imagine the scene. Every pastor I know has had this experience. Imagine the scene. A father is speaking to the pastor out in the lobby of the church after services. He says, you know why I want to join the church? He's a dad in his 30s holding an infant on his shoulder. A petunia pickle bottom diaper bag slung over his other shoulder. His wife standing nearby holding the hand of a cranky two-year-old with a runny nose. He says, we obviously have been thinking about raising children. There are too many opinions out there about what's right and what's wrong, if you want my thoughts on it. Too many temptations, too many possible wrong turns. We want our kids to learn some positive values. This, in this church, we think that those positive values are taught. So we want to be a part of a church that teaches good values. Now, this is particularly meaningful to Beth and me, having now finished our 11th year in our midst. So the graduates of the, in the high school class this year were seven years old when we got here. And they've, because of you, they have been taught many great values. It just... Dad, his dad, the dad says, we just want to be a church that teaches good values. And you understand that. We've come through a few years when we've been searching for values we can count on. Some claiming the old values don't, don't apply. Moral climate has changed. Some strident voices out there are telling us what to believe. Yet, past pastors increasingly hear our people say that they are not sure what to believe. Life is perplexing. Life's ambiguous. This year has been perplexing, don't you think? So people want guidance. They want direction. You may be among them. I remember a mom in, a frustrated mom in a support group said, don't just sit there and accept me. Tell me what I believe. So today, we turn to the Beatitudes. For a clear word is needed in confusing times. It's good news that Jesus is a teacher. 
According to the Gospel of Matthew, he climbed a mountain like Moses climbed the mountain. You know, he went up the mountain, got the Ten Commandments. Jesus climbed a mountain and taught with authority unlike anybody else. In the first gospel, there are five collections of his teachings. And the central one of the five collections of his teachings is, the, is called the Sermon on the Mount. And the focal part of the Sermon on the Mount are the Beatitudes. Blessings, supreme blessings. He offers us and gives to us in them a glimpse of the kingdom Jesus proclaims. They point to the values which are honored within God's kingdom. So, let's get right at it. What does God bless? What does God bless? The poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, the merciful, the peacemakers, the pure in heart, those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, and those who are persecuted for righteousness. Needless to say, the proclamation of supreme blessing on which people act that most, mostly, are perplexing to us. Jesus' Beatitudes list is a variety of characteristics that sketch the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Yet, how can that be? When we need Jesus to be clear, he is somewhat elusive. So let me give you a hint. If you want to understand the Beatitudes, you begin with the two greatest commandments. We say them with some frequency. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you want to know, understand the Beatitudes, you need to start with those two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because these Beatitudes begin and center in the, your relationship with God. These Beatitudes center and begin with your relationship with God. The Beatitude gives give us hope for the future. They keep us going in the present by pointing to what lies ahead. Now, you may have noticed something about the Beatitudes. He says them to no one in particular. He unleashes them into the air. Yes, there were, were many gathered on that mountainside as he first said them. But he says them in a way that they are for all time. Even the likes of us. Blessed are the meek wherever you are. Blessed are the merciful wherever they may be. Blessed are the peacemakers whoever and wherever. The blessing fits our circumstances. Welcome to the kingdom. And if it doesn't fit, you can put yourself in a position to receive this blessing. If we desire a happy life, we must get out into the world and be poor in spirit. And if we wanted to be blessed, we will become 
peacemakers. Now, there's no, no, no assurance that trying to live the Beatitudes will give to you an easy life. We can claim them as our values to teach our children and virtues to pursue in life, but they are not stepping stones to success, at, le least, at least not in this age. Try this out. Somebody has said, Blessed are the meek. Try being meek tomorrow when you go to work and see how far that gets you. Meekness is a fine thing for church, but in the real world, the meek go home with a pink slip with a pat on the back. Have you ever been told that you are just too kind for this work? It's difficult to understand the Beatitudes of Jesus, the supreme blessings of Jesus, if you don't first start with the relationship with God and the relationship with your neighbors. You know, I, I knew a pastor who visited every one of his members on their birthday. Bob. So you're, it's your birthday today. This pastor would say, you're 65. What is your go next year going to mean to your journey with Jesus? God's given you another year. What does that blessing mean to you? More opportunity to help people. I was not expecting you to answer that, but that's a good answer. Absolutely. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Why did Jesus say that? These words, in such a rough and aggressive world, they don't comfort anxious parents, give quick assurances in the church or in the marketplace. They, all they do is unsettle us. And if these blessings by Jesus are truly inscribed upon our hearts, they prompt us to wonder whether or not they are true. Have you ever wondered whether the Beatitudes are true? Are the poor in spirit blessed by God? Is God revealed to the pure in heart? Will God give the earth as a free inheritance to the meek? We cannot know until we are claimed by the crucifixion and resurrection of the living Christ. We cannot know until we are claimed by the power of the crucifixion and the resurrection of the living Christ. Christ. And then we will receive that blessing. There's a bricklayer from Texas who died a few years ago. Many Texans freely admit that they are not generally no, known for their meekness and gentleness. Hmm. As somebody notes, they are a flinty people formed by a dry wind that blows across the hard land. 
A true Texan is, clip, is typically full of bluster, not humility. Yet this bricklayer was a follower of Jesus Christ, and his discipleship tempered him into a gentle man. And it was most evident in his work. At a memorial service, the son of this bricklayer offered an eloquent testimony of how his dad's faith had affected the quality of his daily work. It said, If customers wanted a quick, cheap piece of work, this man took his time to do the job well and asked for a fair wage. When inferior brick became available, he refused to take shortcuts in, building his, in his building materials. He never made a lot of money or received widespread fame. Yet he rested in the confidence of a hard day's work well done. What kind of life does God value? As we come to the conclusion of this journey with the Beatitudes, what kind of life does God value? The the Beatitudes of Jesus announce a realm of values that press us to ask, that press you to ask, where do you belong? Do you belong to a world of persecution and war-making and death? Or do you belong to the realm of mercy and comfort and purity and righteousness? Daily life can confuse us until we claim our place among Christ's unfinished saints. Do you see yourselves that way? You are one of Christ's unfinished saints. Claim your place in their midst. As we follow Jesus, the blessing of the gospel is that we begin to see the realm of God not as the world sees it. One more story and I'm through. Fred Beekner tells about watching a scene from Ken Burns' film series, The Civil War, fitting for Memorial Weekend. You know, Memorial Day used to be Decoration Day, and it was a, a celebration of those who had given their ultimate in the Civil War originally, and so they decorated the graves of the fallen. Fred Beekner tells about watching a scene from Ken Burns' film series on the Civil War. It was the 50th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. The veterans from North and South gathered at the battleground for, to reminisce. At one point, the veterans decided to reenact Pickett's Charge. All the participants took their position, and then one one side began charging the other. Instead of swords and rifles, this time the vets carried canes and crutches. As both sides converged, the old men did not fight. Instead, they embraced each other and began to weep. Beekner muses, if only those doddering old veterans had seen in 1863 what now they so clearly saw after 50 years. And then he adds, half a century later, that great battle 
had been now known as great madness. The men who were advancing toward them across the field of Gettysburg were not enemies. They were human beings like themselves with the same dreams, needs, hopes, the same wives and children waiting for them to come home. What they saw was what they were, all of us, created not to do battle with each other, but to love one another. It was not just a truth they saw. For a few moments, it was a truth they lived. It was a truth they became. Where do you belong? Where do you belong? When you look out the window, you see a world of division and war. There are debts to pay. There are dangers that scare us. Our children are at risk. The future may seem tenuous. Yet on this Memorial Weekend, we pro, on this Memorial Weekend, we proclaim that we have known some people who have helped us to catch a glimpse of the kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now and then, as in the time of Jesus, this weary old world is unmasked as an illusion. Now as then, even in the time of Jesus, this old world is unmasked as simply an illusion. And we see beyond the shadow that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm totally, brought, I'm totally blessed. And so are you. Will you pray with me? Oh dear God, it is because you journey with us that we are blessed. You give to us the good fortune of being able to love you with all, your, all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Journeying with you in these days, Lord, in every year of our lives is a supreme blessing. Help us, Lord, to love one another, even in these days. Amen.
Back in 63, 1863, my grandpa Buser was in Chattanooga and there was a lull in the battle. He put out, he was a fife player, he was, too, he was young, too young to bear arms. He pulled out a knife that he used for whittling and uh, cut a button off his uniform, hollowed it out, and on its edge laid, inlaid some silver and gold and mother of pearl. And he shaped those materials that were on the edge of the button into hands clasped because he was sending that ring he had made with a note to ask his girl back home to be his bride. It may be that today you feel like you can't find the hand you need to grasp. Then perhaps you are looking in the wrong place. Because the one who was, and is, and is to come, is extending his hand to you. So, take hold. Walk with him, and he will lead you all the way home. Go in peace, go in love. Amen.
shame.